Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I rise today to contribute to the Gambling Regulation Amendment Wagering and Betting Tax Bill 2021, and I'm pleased to follow the Minister for Racing's contribution. The Andrews Labor Government is committed to ensuring all wagering operators pay their fair share of wagering and betting tax, whilst maintaining the tax settings that support a competitive Victorian racing industry and wagering industry. The Government's point of consumption tax framework provides that level playing field, ensuring all wagering and betting providers pay their fair share. And the framework was also designed to ensure there was no adverse impact on Victoria's racing industry, which is a major part of Victoria's sporting landscape and cultural <coughs> tradition to protect Victorian jobs. And protecting Victorian jobs is a key priority for the Andrews Labor government. The racing industry has been part of Victoria's identity and history for a very long time. The jobs that are created because of racing events are of course part of our uh, racing facilities help sustain events jobs. Melton is home to harness racing at Tabcourt Park and the jobs created include events and accommodation and of course local business support. Tabcourt Park is the only function centre within the Melton Township. The, tre the Treasurer has tabled a review of the existing tax framework in this House. That review concluded that the Government's point of consumption tax was successful in achieving its objectives. It found that the introduction of it had not affected the growth in wagering operators' net wagering revenue on Victorian racing industry events. The review also found that the $1 million tax tree threshold has reduced the regulatory burden on small operators without significantly reducing tax revenue and getting the balance right. The proposed 10% rate brings Victoria's point of consumption tax rate into alignment with New South Wales and it remains lower than the 15% in all the other states. All of the additional revenue raised will flow to the Victorian racing industry and this will increase the gross point of consumption tax payment by around $47.6 million next year. The change will also increase the annual, annual donation to the Anzac Day um, Proceeds Fund, which supports veterans. And we all know that veterans deserve and need all the support that they can get. I'm pleased that the Morrison government has finally agreed to a Royal Commission into veteran suicides. The Young Diggers Group in Melton, organised by Carol Doyle, does amazing work with the veterans in Melton, especially with uh, the Vietnam vets. They also work with other emergency service workers suffering with PTSD which is also an issue close to my heart. I've worked extensively with the Melton and Bacchus Marsh sub-branches of the RSL and I know how much great work they do in our electorate for our local veterans. And based on the legislative changes the government made previously, a portion of the point of consumption tax revenue from the month of April is donated to the Anzac Day Proceeds Fund. This payment approximates the revenue raised from wagering and betting activities that occur on Anzac Day, April the 25th. This fund has gone to support veteran projects across Victoria and some of these projects uh, some of these um, projects are varied and creative and I looked into some of the funded grants that have been approved and some of those are the crisis accommodation, the community buses, mel uh, mental health programs, RSL support services, support for magazines and newsletters and communications for remote access and financial literacy programs along with many other projects. This fund is doing great work to support our veterans community and it is fitting that these amendments are going to provide even more support for the Anzac Day Proceeds Fund. The increase in the tax rate to 10% is expected to increase annual donation to the Anzac Day Proceeds Fund by around $100,000 per year and the balance of the revenue will continue to be paid into the Hospitals and Charities Fund which is used to support our hospitals, health and community services in Victoria. The Victorian Government announced in January this year that the increase passed through will see the net benefit to the Victorian racing industry by around $20 million per annum. And this increase will be provided to the three controlling bodies in racing in Victoria, being the Victorian Racing Club that's for thoroughbreds, Harness Racing Victoria and of course Greyhound Racing Victoria. And the additional support for the industry through the passage of this bill ensures that the three bodies can continue to in invest in prize money returns for the thousands of Victorian participants that work in this industry, these industries. It invests in, in important animal welfare and participant welfare measures. And it also continues to invest in world-class racing and training facilities and infrastructure that attracts visitors and investment into Victoria. 
As I mentioned earlier, Tabcorp Park in Melton has hosted events uh, and been a facility not just for racing. Uh, the Melton Council has hosted the Melton Business Awards in the past there. And I, I had been delighted to attend functions that um, continue to support the Melton community. I've also attended functions there that have raised money for ovarian cancer research, school awards nights and graduation ceremonies. And there's always great functions on at this facility. The revenue will also be critical in helping to close the gap with the New South Wales racing industry in terms of funding support it receives from government funding streams. I've noticed that New South Wales have been very keen to try to steal the thunder of Victorians racing heritage. And I can only say that's only because probably New South Wales racing doesn't match up to Victorian racing. The competition of the last few years has seen our interstate rivalry increases as across the border they try to entice the racing industry away from their home in Victoria. And I'd just um, say to them, good luck. Uh, I don't think they'll have much uh, chance of taking away our racing industry or reducing our racing industry. These amendments continue to conf confirm these, this government's commitment to the racing industry and the jobs that it creates for Victorians. It is imperative that the Victorian government continues to support an industry that supports many thousands of jobs to ensure that Victorian racing maintains its preeminence and ensures overseas and interstate racing investment is brought into Victoria. The racing industry is one of the state's most significant industries, delivering more than $4.3 billion in economic value each year and supporting over 34,000 full-time equivalent jobs. A strong and vibrant racing industry is particularly key for regional Victoria where more than 100 clubs are supported by more than 80,000 individuals who are involved in the industry, either as a participant, employee or volunteer. And this includes more than 20,000 uh, FTE across regional Victoria. You know, just the Ballarat region alone, more than 1,300 jobs, including an economic impact of training expenditure in the region of $48 million. You know, the Bendigo region, 1,200 jobs, and again, economic impact, um, $34 million. The Geelong region, 1,100 jobs, including economic impact uh, in the region of $20 million. And of course, the outer Melbourne region of 10,300 jobs, and the economic impact is $180 million. This is an incredible industry that delivers for our state. So the government recognises the critical importance that our regional racing clubs have for local communities. Not only is the sector a key employer in regional Victoria, employing more than 20,000 jobs, but also as a key community hub for regional towns and centres. This, this can be either through the social occasion of an annu annual country cup or with clubs providing key infrastructure for their local communities. And attending the country races is a great social outing and means a lot to the local towns and communities. It also supports the local businesses. And I uh, have attended um, many a race meeting uh, at some of the race tracks, uh, such as Avoca, Burrumbeet, Echuca, Bendigo, Geelong, Camperdown, Dunkeld, Colac, most of the um, inner city race tracks I've been to. Uh, I'm not a very good punter, but I continue to go back. Um, but it's an enjoyable day. Uh, and in fact, I was part of a, a racehorse syndicate some years ago um, with my brothers and some friends. And I, if I have to give any advice to people, don't go into a syndicate with your brothers. Uh, you end up with no money in your pocket, that's for sure. Uh, we were very unsuccessful, but we had a fantastic time. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a great fun racing your own horse, uh, even though it didn't uh, run many places or win many races. Um, so this is a fantastic industry. Um, this is a great amendment to this bill uh, and I commend this bill to the House. Thank you.